hey guys welcome to another video firstly thank you to those who are subscribing thank you for all the kind comments it is much appreciated as the name implies aperture to zoom we're going to be covering all the various concepts in both photography and videography running the full gambit from a to z hence aperture to zoom um, i've done quite a few videos already around the panasonic lumix g9 which is the main sort of camera i've been using i do have the panasonic lumix g7 which i'm recording this on so i'm a bit of a fan of the lumix cameras and i'll probably be sticking with that ecosystem for a while um, anyway for the short to medium term i don't see the point in really investing in another camera at this juncture i'm quite happy with the lumix g7 for video and i'm quite happy with the lumix g9 for stills the most recent um, acquisition i got was the 12 to 60 millimeter lens and to be fair i've been using um intelligent auto quite a bit just to see what the camera can do then i can really make an educated um i suppose comparison when i move to a raw and start taking photos and manipulating it in photoshop and lightroom and so forth and so on but today's video is going to be around the histogram and that's a little tool that can help us make sure we tweak in our exposure right so um it's probably best if I jump on the computer, bring the old camera uh, onto screen and then walk through what that histogram looks like and what is the actual value proposition around using it and um, what and how does it actually improve our photography. You know, I'm used to the exposure meter, which is just the plus minus setting on the bottom. I'm kind of new to the histogram, so I um, thought I'd do a little video on it and just unpack what my findings have been. I've been using it um, recently, so I'm quite happy with it. It does sort of, it takes a bit of getting used to being on the screen, but hey, it's like everything in life, eventually you'll just get used to it. So that's another little tool that we have in our arsenal. Um, so yeah, let's jump onto the computer and we'll take it from there. okay guys so i'm just on the computer here just got my camera hooked up so you can see what i'm seeing and as you can see there's just a little i'm just pointing it towards my wife's desk and i'm going to be running through how we get the histogram on currently the exposure meters there blah 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 i won't run through any other settings that's not necessary but simply navigate to the menu, make sure you come down to the old custom menu, go over to the monitor and display tab, and then find your way down to page five. As you can see, there are eight pages in there, so go down to page five, beg your pardon, there we go, and then hit the old select the histogram and make sure that's put on. So when you put that on, you'll see it a little inset rocks up on the screen and you have the option of moving that little histogram box to wherever you want to i think you can even make it quite big um, using some button no uh, hold on if i select it again it does show um, i think when you do add it initially before you move it you can change the size but anyway i've got this size for the time being and that's the first thing we'll need to cover is um, what the histogram is in, es in essence it's a <coughs> graph that gives us a, vis a visual um, representation of what our exposure is going to look like you normally our exposure meter down at the bottom there will give us a minus three or a plus one or whatever the case may be showing us whether we over or underexposed all the histogram is it's another tool via a graph that shows us what our exposure is looking like so now let's just run through some of the actual dynamics of the histogram the first thing to note is when it's yellow as it is now that's a flag to say hey pay attention something going on around with your histogram okay and you can see it's leaning towards the left of this little screen so let's just play around with um our shutter speed i'll just leave the aperture as it is 
actually I'll drop it right down to its widest and there you can see straight away um, our Instagram is moved over so let's get it to the middle nicely so just to recap aperture is nice and wide at 1.7 got a shutter speed at 25 we're sitting at a 200 ISO and as you can see the histograms turned white okay so that gives us a sign yep we're good to go and you can see on the exposure meter it says zero so the exposure meter and the histogram they're in accord so let's take a photo actually i took two but anyway and as fate would have it my battery is running up uno momento please while i just change battery okay so let's carry on now that we got the battery sorted and as you can see um forgive me if i bump the table and everything wobbles um as you can see the histogram is looking quite good we got it white so now what we're going to be doing is um let's overexpose this picture so that means we're really going to slow down that shutter speed and let in way too much light. And that's, let's go down to two, that should do the trick. And then take the photo. And then what I want to do is just bring up our preview mode. And let's see. So now when you're in the preview mode, you've got some options here. There's five different pages that you can navigate through. I'll just run through them quickly for interest sake. Page one gives us all the information as to what our current settings are for that camera. We've got manual, automatic focus, continuous, shooting JPEG, yada, yada, yada. So it's good to have a look at that. Gives you a nice snapshot of what your settings were in preview mode. Page two works more in conjunction with a histogram in as much as um, you've got your red, your green, your blue, and I would imagine why is for yellow. And as you can see here, there's four quadrants. And the quadrants have a tendency, or I beg your pardon, the graph has a tendency to the right, which tells us that our image is overexposed, right? Um, did I take a previous shot? Yes, I did. So that's the shot that I took earlier. And as you can see, we're sort of leaning a, a little bit to the left, but more in the middle. And that's the idea with the histogram. We want to try and get the peak of our photo to be in the center that means we're not overexposed to the right or underexposed to the left so let's just go back to that photo as you can see again that one is telling us in no uncertain terms we're overexposed so let's go back to our preview this time we are going to underexpose that image so what does that mean we're going to make our shutter speed way too fast so it's not allowing enough lighting and it's bringing it right down real dark and let's take that photo in fact let's take two for some reason i'm three happy um, because i have it on burst mode that would make sense okay and now let's have a look here <coughs> bringing up our preview mode there we go and there you can see everything if we look at our four quadrants here we are far to the left which tells us that our image is underexposed so the idea with the histogram as i mentioned earlier is to get it nicely in the middle okay uh, so that we can use the histogram in conjunction to our exposure meter making sure we are better exposed um i'm just trying to think if there's anything else let's go back here just for the sake of argument and let's bring that down to what would be considered a better exposure and as you can see there we wiped again and the camera saying look that's a lot better take the photo let's look at the preview And there you can see we sort of spread across the middle. Not perfect, but better. And the more you play around with that histogram, with your different lenses and your different settings, the more you'll get better at it. And it'll be another um, tool in your arsenal. So that is pretty much it. 
and I will wrap up now. All right, guys, so um, I'm going to wrap it up. I hope that sort of brief, short um, overview gives you an idea as to what the histogram is all about. I've got it set up on my Lumix G7 here because I'm a reasonable distance from the camera and it's a little hard sometimes seeing the exposure meter but I can see that the um, histogram is nicely like a tower in the middle and that's telling me that I'm reasonably um, well or spot on when it comes to exposure. So guys, uh, just another little concept that we need to uh, be aware of. Uh, the histogram, you don't have to have it on your uh, screen all the time. I'm sort of keeping it on because I'm trying to get used to it. I find it doesn't really bother me on the screen, but it may bother you and I'm not sure. Um, but have a play with it. That certainly is another tool that I think adds some value to um, our skills. Uh, as the name implies, Aperture to Zoom, we're going to be covering everything uh, around these concepts for both photography and videography. And I'm really enjoying going through these things bit by bit and um, putting them into practice. Um, there's a lot of things I need to get through. That 12 to 60 millimeter lens, I still really haven't put it through its um, paces. I'm doing my first um, real estate shoot on Thursday, which I'm quite excited about. I'm going to be taking some photos for a little apartment here on the Gold Coast. Uh, so that's a bit of a side hustle that I'm using my photography for, uh, my skills for at least that I'm acquiring in get, trying to get into the real estate space and um, build up a little bit of a side hustle and, and um, things like that. So um, I don't know what your um, photographic goals are, but it starts with us learning and mastering these things from A to Z, from Aperture to Zoom and everything in between. So guys, if that sort of resonates with you, please consider subscribing, hit the old like button, comment uh, if I could improve in any way. If there's any particular thing you'd like me to talk about, please drop it in the comments and uh, we will no doubt catch up in the next video. Over and out. Take care. Bye-bye.